Today, we're diving into the level 3 unbrick method, and I'll walk you through the process step by step using the Nantfix Pro. Let's get started! The level 3 method is specifically for those situations where your console's NAND is totally gone, as you can see here. The other red flag is the purple screen when booting to OFW. While not every purple screen requires level 3, the clear indication, the biggest one, is when you have zero EMMC or NAND partitions and no backup to restore from. Another clear indicator is when you try to launch either SysMMC CFW or Semi-Stock and you get this specific error message right here on the screen. So, when you don't have that crucial NAND backup, especially the original console's prodinfo, we're going to have to generate it. We'll be using the prodinfo gen tool for that. I'm going to walk you through those exact steps in the very next section. Before we dive in, let's go over the prerequisites. First, grab the latest NANDFIX Pro tool from its GitHub page. Just head to the Releases tab and download the newest version. You'll also need the current hats pack, the latest firmware pack, and a functional donor prodinfo file. Finally, make sure you have a reliable USB-C cable on hand. Assuming you've already got the hats pack installed on your console's SD card, let's move on. Now, go ahead and extract the firmware pack and the donor prodinfo onto your desktop. Next, double-click the Nanfix Pro self-extracting executable file and extract it to a folder on your computer. Now we need to back up the console's NAND. Even though the console is bricked, backing up the NAND is still mandatory. From the Hecate main menu, select Tools. Choose Backup EMMC and click EMMC Boot 0 and Boot 1. Close the page and now click EMMC RAW GPP. This is going to take a moment to complete. Even though the NAND is bricked, creating this backup is still a smart move. That data might prove useful later. Close the page twice and click Home. Now we will dump the console keys. On the Home menu, click Payload, then select Lockpick RCM. Flip the tablet over, make sure the cursor is on dump from SysNAN, then press the power button to proceed. Press any key to return to the home menu, then use the volume keys to move the cursor and select Reboot to Hecate. On Hecate, select Tools, then USB Tools, disable the RAID only option, then click SD card. Connect the console to the computer using a USB Type-C cable. Back to the computer, open the mounted SD card drive and enter the switch folder. Open the donor prod info folder and drag the content into the switch folder. Right-click the mounted SD card drive and select eject. Back to Hecate, get to the home page, remove the USB cable, then click Payloads. Select the Prodinfo Gen payload. Flip the tablet over. Make sure you select Build Prodinfo file from Donor, which is the second line on the menu. If everything was done correctly, you should now see these status messages appear on your screen. Press any button to get back to the home screen and select Reboot to Hecate. Let's remount the SD card. Head over to the Tools menu, choose USB Tools, and hit SD card. Grab your USB-C cable and plug the tablet back into your PC. Open the extracted Nanfix Pro folder and double-click the EXE file. 
The launcher is going to install all dependencies, so if you're running it for the first time, allow it a moment to finish. OK, now click the Level 3 tab and select the Firmware folder. Now that the SD card is mounted through the Hecate USB tools, click Get Keys from SD. The script will then scan for and retrieve the prod.keys file along with the generated donor prod info. Now we're at the cosmetic settings. These fields are optional and generally won't impact how your console works. But the Wi-Fi region is an exception. A necessary warning, this part will not help an already banned console. You can restore the serial number, but that's purely cosmetic. You'll see it in semi-stock or OFW, but you'll never be able to access Nintendo servers again. Choose your Wi-Fi region carefully, as an incorrect selection can prevent your console from scanning for and connecting to local Wi-Fi networks. The frame color setting simply changes the tablet frame or switch light color shown in the controller's menu. So go ahead and fill out the rest of this form based on your personal preferences. The Verify Prod Info Integrity button is there to check if the supplied donor prod info is valid. However, if you followed the link in the description and used that donor file, you can skip that button. Just click Apply Changes to move on to the next step. Now we need to eject the mounted SD card drive safely. Right-click the drive and click Eject. Return to Hecate, close the pop-up, make sure read-only is active, and click EMMC Raw GPP. Back to the Nanfix Pro, click the Start Level 3 process. Now, just let the script run and wait until the next pop-up window appears. We've reached the final step, flashing the boot 0 and boot 1 files using Hecate. Click OK on this pop-up window and then head back into Hecate. Physically disconnect the USB cable. Close the pop-up window. Reconnect it. And then click the SD card option. Return to the Nanfix Pro, then click Copy Boot to SD. Then press Yes to confirm it and click OK. We have one last critical step, flashing the boot 0 and boot 1. Hit the close button twice and then select Restore EMMC. Select EMMC boot 0 and boot 1. Simply ignore the file size mismatch warnings and keep the process moving.
That completes the level 3 unbrick process. Now, let's go ahead and test the console to make sure it worked. Go to the launch menu and select SysMMC CFW. Okay, as soon as that red initial setup boot animation appears, we know the console is officially fixed. Go ahead and start setting up the system. At this point, you have successfully revived the console. However, in the next section, I'm going to show you something that confuses almost everyone. A visual cue that leads most people to believe the console is still broken. Since this console is running a donor prod info, it is now effectively permanently banned. It will never connect to Nintendo's servers again because this file is entirely artificial. That doesn't mean you can't use Wi-Fi, but you must aware that the console is fully functional only when running CFW, even with the Wi-Fi turned on. So, let's go ahead and connect the console to the Wi-Fi network. We'll then use the Quick NTP Tesla overlay to sync the current time, which proves the Wi-Fi connection is working. Now let's reboot the console. Then, let's launch Semi-Stock, which Hecate recognizes and refers to as Stock. Okay, now we just need to wait for the console to successfully connect to the internet, and then you'll see the crash happen. There it is the 2123-0011 error. When reviving a console via the level 3 method with a donor prodinfo, this crash is the expected behavior whenever you connect to Wi-Fi on semi-stock or OFW. If you want semi-stock or OFW to run stably without crashing, you need to either delete the Wi-Fi profile immediately or simply boot into SysMMC CFW every single time. Once deleted, the console won't crash and you can see the console's serial number displayed, although remember that it's purely cosmetic in this case. And that brings the video to a close. Thank you for watching, I'm confident this tool will make it easier for you to fix both your console and many others. I'll see you in the next video.